uh, you know, maybe a few weeks ago, you saw me play NL5, I played NL10, I played NL25, I played NL50, and I believe I, yeah, I played NL100 as well. So I'm doing a, I'll be starting a moving up the stakes series where basically I, I play different stakes that I normally don't play and I show you what I believe are the best adjustments, right? How, how to crush these games because, I mean, strategies I use at high stakes uh, would work at, at these stakes as well, but, you know, there's different tactics that would work even better. So it's like a combination of like in-depth review as well as adjustments to, you know, your actual stake when it comes to rake, when it comes to exploiting your opponents, uh, just general things to look for. Uh, if you guys are interested, uh, go to bluffthespot.com and click on the lab. And yeah, you, maybe, even if you want to sign up, just sign up for one month and just see how it works. And if you know, if you don't like it, I mean, it's not a it's not a large investment, right? So what we wanted to do is create a product not only for people who want to spend a bit more money on, the, for instance, the ultimate course, but some people who want something slightly more basic and also less of a commitment, right? So you could just try out for a month, and if you like it that's awesome. And if you say, Hey, it was good, but I prefer not to take part anymore, then you just cancel. I mean, we have a community as well. So you can, you know, it's a great place to find other people to, uh, to talk poker with, because if you go on two plus two, I mean, you find some good posters, I suppose, but there's just a lot of nonsense out there. Right. But once you basically filter a lot of trolls out or people who have no idea, you can just get a, a nice community where you can, um, or you can talk hands. And also we have a we have a monthly webinar um, that which will be presented by me. So it's basically an interactive webinar where you send in, let's say, let's say we do a hand history review on check raising. Everybody can send in hands uh, that have to do with check raising. And I present the, the, the monthly webinar. Right. So it's interactive. So it's it's personalized coaching in a in a group setting so so everybody will be uh, receiving coaching from me even if you're not a student uh, in the cfp let's do a footage review so one of our new students newer students was kind enough to send me some uh, uh was kind enough to uh, send me some footage of him playing and this is nl25 on poker stars so I know the games quite well I, because I played them not that long ago. So yeah, I'll just be going through general things, general improvements uh, at NL25, like how to exploit the games. Obviously not as much as I would uh, reveal in an actual uh, video for, uh, for Bluff the Spot, but I'll give you a nice little teaser, right? Talk about uh, how our hero can improve his game as well. And Jimmy DeRaid is also part of the program. And uh, Jimmy DeRaid is one of the best 500 Zoom regs. He's also starting to play some bigger stakes. So, I mean, obviously an excellent player who can coach you guys plenty of stuff. Let me see. I captured the screen. So this should, we should be able to view it like this. I guess that's, it. so let me wait 15 seconds. In the meantime, what's up? No pressure. Hard to find good content in French. Yeah, actually, um, so Mathieu is French Canadian. So if, if you were to be coached by him privately, you could speak French to him. Obviously, the vid videos are going to be in English because, you know, I mean, that's a, that's a language most people speak. Jimmy did a very good job of the webinar. I thought it would be too basic, but I learned uh, a few things. That's good to hear, uh, Sabino. Appreciate it. All right. So let's start, guys. So I haven't seen this footage. Uh, you know, I want the analysis to be organic. All right, so let's start. Um, the HUD looks pretty good. There's not too many stats in there. Uh, I'm a proponent of having a pretty simple HUD. More stats is not necessarily better. And I also like that the that the, it's quite clean, right? You see four tables with no overlap, not too much information. So you're not going to make too many, you know, uh, you're not going to misclick uh, too much or like, you know, just not be able to reach the button. So I like that it's quite clean. I think long term, that's very important. Otherwise, you know, your lack of proper setup is going to annoy you. And that's going to, you know, it's going to mean that you play fewer hands an hour. You might play them a bit worse. You start tilting a little bit. So it's very important to invest a little bit of time in setting up your, uh, your, your having a nice setup, basically. So, but playing while well still more, more important. I also like that we're uh, that we've converted to big blinds, and we've got queen jack suited here first hand, middle position limp. So that's going to happen quite often in NL25. Uh, I would not really be bluff raising very often unless you have a very specific read, which is you know hard to have, right? Because you play hundreds of oppon opponents in this pool. So I'd just be raising my better hands. 
um, the button is not going to have too many great hands because there's so much incentive for him to just isolate uh, uh, middle position. So with queen jack suited, definitely raising about five big blinds seems right. If you see this guy call with ridiculous hands, like king five off suit and whatever, yeah, make it bigger, right? Sure, why not? If you believe there's more value and this guy doesn't really care about paying a few more big blinds, go ahead. Um, 6.4 is a little bit too much, unless you have very specific reads, but I don't see I don't see you having any notes on the, this player, so I don't see any crazy stats. So yeah, six point four that's a bit too much. Kings easy three bet, a uh, bit scary. The guy has about seven hundred big blinds, so maybe he's quite good, but easy three bet of course. And fours is pretty close, but I think we can raise here. Probably prefer, I would probably prefer a slightly smaller raise size than this. But it's okay. Um, my OCD is kicking in uh, because of the fact that 175 is between 50 and pot in the, rather than on the right. But anyway, um, I would definitely also include some kind of bet size in between uh, that, something like three quarters pot, but it's not a big deal. I see you have smaller buttons there. Uh, so when villain calls six and a half big blinds with another player person behind him, he's going to have a pretty strong range. So this is not a board I'm just going to blindly bet a third of the pot on. So if I wanted to bet here, probably size up a bit. Uh, this hand is not the worst hand to be betting with, right? We have a pretty good flush draw, backdoor straight draw, uh, two over cards. So I, I'd mostly be betting here. I think the bet size could have been a bit larger. And notice how villain just snap calls the flop so he's basically saying i've got like a decent hand um and this card is really bad for us you know villain could definitely have five four and hit a straight he could have uh, hit a straight with nine eight he could have sevens or six seven or maybe just has like ten nine and he's obviously not folding right so i actually wouldn't hate if you just check here it's gonna go check check quite a bit and you'll just realize your equity but i think you're not gonna get many folds out of this guy one, on the seven turn specifically, I think you'll get almost no folds. Not almost no folds, but not too many. So yeah, I wouldn't hate if you just play tight here. Yeah, actually, I actually like this. I didn't expect you to check, but I actually don't mind this. Uh, in general, when we have decent draws, you know, we have a decent draw with a queen high flush draw, two over cards, so we get to be quite aggressive. But you, you don't have to like bet every single draw 100% of the time. So yeah, I don't mind this check. Hmm. So a really tricky spot here because this is re a really bad run out for us, for our, our range, right? Because how do we have an 8 here? Not often. How do we have a flush? Well, we got one now, but we don't have too many of them. So it's it's a really good card for our range, obviously, or for our ha for our actual hand, but not our range. So um, I actually wouldn't hate if you ended up check raising here, you know, letting him bet two pair or a set or a straight. Um, I also wouldn't mind if you go for like a smaller bet here. So... He limp called six and a half big blinds. So that makes me think he is on the stronger side. Uh, one benefit of checking is that if he floated with a ridiculous hand, uh, he does turn it into a bluff potentially, and he obviously won't call. So I actually wouldn't mind if he ended up checking here. This bet size in theory makes a lot of sense. Question is whether or not you want to do that in practice, right? And we've got pocket fours here. We raise under the gun, which is loose. These pairs don't play as well as you would think, but it's okay. Um, middle position cold calls, which... So that's, that's for instance, a play I don't, don't really recommend that, uh, at NL25. I assume the rake's going to be over 10 big blinds here. So paying rake by going to the flop is heavily disincentivized. Uh, Symbiosis doesn't have a full stack and he overcalled as well. So he could be a recreational player, but who knows? And he bets half pot. I like the fact that we're checking range on this board. I think Symbiosis can have all the sets in 6-7. Uh, middle position, maybe not so much, but he's doing well. So checking range here, at least checking a lot makes sense. And against half pot, you know, you don't want to be doing a lot of raising. If you believe this guy is just, uh, you know, rec a weaker player and he's just going to put the money in, then actually we prefer a check raise. So we've seen two plays so far that theoretically are really good. The question is whether or not you're doing something which is too complicated for your stakes, right? Where if, if you check call here at 5K, I would say, hey, that definitely is part of a great strategy. Good job. 
Uh, question is whether or not you want to do that at NL25 uh, as much, at least, uh, against somebody who might be a bit weaker, right? So after seeing two hands, I might be slightly worried that you're not adjusting against your opponents. Uh, but again, that's only two hands. So let's see what happens. Ace-5 suited, meanwhile, is a nice three-bet hand. And let's see what four is here. His sizing is going to depend, like his sizing is going to largely dictate what we do here. If he just bets like five, five big blinds, right? Maybe he's just making a thin value bet with pocket eights. And I think we should be raising. Whereas if he bets something like full pot, now we are much more scared. I mean, ace deuce is just not a hand I expect him to have much. Six, seven, he could have. Pocket fives, he could have. So when he bets half pot here, I think he probably just has like a decent hand. So I would, I would be I would be check raising here. And yes, we can definitely have bluffs. We can turn some pairs plus draws into a bluff. We can have some actual draws. So that call I'm not a big fan of because what's ha going to happen now is that if he has any like pocket eights, he's just going to check it behind. Whereas it had you raised over, had you raised in like sixes or sevens, you could have gotten more money out of him. And when he very quickly checks, that makes me think he had one of those hands. I swear I haven't seen it before. Um, so we're not looking. Maybe that was off screen, but I'd really like to know what he had, right? So here, um, so general tip, guys. If somebody, if you're in a very weird spot, right, like where people could have many different hands, always look. I mean, you're getting free information. Maybe the guy had like nine dues offsuit right in which case you can say okay this guy's a gigantic fish calling everything maybe he had aces and you can write that while well, this guy's trapping preflop right or maybe he had a reasonable hand like sevens or tens or whatever so always look always look you get free information so why not um so we threw about small blind versus cut up with ace five suited which i like and then the big blind cold calls which i do not like he should be always four betting or folding here so um, what I would be careful of is just always betting here. When he cold calls, he's going to have a you know pretty strong range. He's going to have a hand, hands like ace queen and maybe even ace king and jacks and tens and eights and nines and whatever. So I don't anticipate you finding many getting many folds here. So with a hand like this, which has like a backdoor gut shot and no backdoor flush draw, I think you should probably just give up. And of course, we'll have all the strong hands, right? We'll have kings here, we'll have aces, we'll have ace-king. We'll have better backdoor hands, like jack-10 suited, you know, which have overcards to the eight, at least have a backdoor straight draw, which block, you know, jacks and tens, perhaps. Um, so that this end is a little bit too weak. Now I think it's time to give up. Nines is definitely a hand that could be in his range. Meanwhile, with the jack then suited, I don't mind his three bets. Um, this player doesn't have a full stack, so he could be weaker as well. So I don't mind targeting targeting him. And on queen six six, we can be very very aggressive with just a smaller bet. Okay, so I would definitely like to see you just bet your whole range on queen six six. The six is not that relevant. I mean, he's gonna have some combinations of maybe six five and six seven, but that's about it, right? And he's gonna have some combinations of maybe like king queen suited, and maybe you know I I guess people have ace queens some ace queens here, but that's about it, right? There's not much else to have, so you can just bet this board very aggressively. And when the big blind ace five suited here bets so big, I mean I think it's pretty obvious that he just calls and just hit a good hand, you know? Maybe he has ace queen and he's turned it into a bluff, but most likely this is just some kind of uh, good hand so yeah easy fold so seven five deuce here um i think this is a c bet so in theory we should still be checking a decent amount on a board like this but again we see somebody who doesn't have a full stack and is likely a weaker player so we have a hand here we've got a pair of sevens which is great and we also have really good backdoors so this is a nice hand to just be value protection betting the flop with so um you know, range betting, like range checking a lot of boards is not that good at the uh, NL25 because there's, I mean, checking range is based on your opponent just cold calling very tight range and you doing fine but not great but and being out of position, right? But if he cold calls ridiculous hands, then all of that goes out the window. So, yeah, I would definitely like to see you see bet here. 
Your hand gets plenty of value and also plenty of protection. And with Jack-10, I wouldn't hate if you bet here. It would be a bit spastic because you don't have equity, but at least you block 10s and Jacks and Queen-Jack and Queen-10. Um, at this point, of, you could even value protection by a hand like East-King. So, And I also think that a lot of players are probably quite weak here. So if I play this hand at high stakes, I would be careful because I could definitely get check raise or just check halt. But I would say that a lot of players don't have much of a check calling or check raising range here. So you can be you can be a bit more aggressive. So at these stakes, I would generally say just being loose and aggressive is is the way to go, right? Maybe not too loose when it comes to defending the big blind, stuff like that. But just trying to run people over, that's the best way uh, to, uh, to uh, approach this game. Because the average regular here and even the average fish is going to be quite nitty, quite scared. <clears throat> so this player bets two thirds pawn. I don't really hate either option. Um, I expect to see you call. Uh, King eight suited. We could have considered raising on another gun. We don't have to, but we could have considered it at least. And with Jack Tan here. So this end is not the worst end to be bluffing with, right? because again, we block some weaker queens that he might have check called. We block ends like queens, uh, like Jacks and tens that he might check call. So it's more likely that he just has like a flush shot to check all with, or that he just has like pocket sevens. That's a bit weaker. So I don't, I don't mind if you end up uh, bluffing here, but I think the mistake was made on the flop, and we could have just be always bet. Also, probably would like to see a bit of a larger bet. Ten three three is a pretty good board for us. It's not incredible, but it's pretty good. Okay, so this this guy basically, I mean, you saw he snap called it. Uh, this guy basically says, you check back the flop, you can't have shit. So against this guy, you can be a bit more tricky, right? Put some sneaky valley bets into these uh, these lines, and, you know, he's probably going to be calling everything. So, yeah. I mean, so it's an okay call. It's not the worst call ever, but it is quite loose. And here at 6-7, probably looking to call again, but it's not a great spot. And Jack 10 suited here, you could consider a bet if you like. I mean, you block ace, jack, ace, 10, which is good. You got some nice backdoor. So we can't always bet all these hands, but just mixing it up and just sometimes betting them. I mean, this hand is fantastic for betting. All right. And 6, 7, just looking to check. Hoping to beat hand like 6s or 8s. So you see, again, like this is kind of what happened in the previous hand, right? Like he bets... He bets two thirds and then he bets half pot and he just has like a decent hand. And this time you lose and then the last time you won. But you see, so basically what you see is that these guys are stabbing a lot and pretty thinly. So yeah, I'll be looking to attack them a bit more. You're letting them off the hook a little bit. And here with Jack 10, we see a very small lead by villain and a call. Um, this hand would definitely not be the worst to raise with given that we have an open ender and a flush draw. And when people, I mean, we also block these Jack Ace 10, which is nice. So I wouldn't hate seeing you go for a big raise here. You would be repping a hand like Ace Queen that sometimes checks behind. You would be representing a hand like Queens, right? Maybe occasionally a hand like Aces. Or you could even take a hand like Ace Jack and just raise the turn and then check behind the river. So I wouldn't, I, I wouldn't mind if you ended up raising here. And meanwhile, with the King 10. Honestly, every every play makes sense. Small bet, big bet, check, everything makes sense. Uh, sense to me. So let's see what you do. Um, I didn't see the jack ten sizing, but it seems like you raise, which I don't mind. Uh, the issue now is that you have really bad a really bad hand to bluff with because you have spades in your hand, which is not fantastic. And also, I mean, some of your draws are going to be Jack-10 as a bluff. You also have a Jack at the 10. So, you know, Villain is, uh, I think Villain's going to look you up. And in general, also here at Nano 25, I would say you want to be, be careful. They're going to see like, oh, every single bluff missed. Um, you know, he's not representing a whole lot. I'm just going to call. And then you'll see what happens with pocket fours. You'll see that in these games that when it looks like you can't really represent stuff, they always call you down. So when it comes to like bet, bet, betting, they probably give you some credit. But when you put in, you know, a bit more of a tricky line, they, you know, they will just say, hey, if this guy had a good hand, he would have bet the flop, right? They don't think that people can check back good hands on the flop. 
So being a bit more tricky for, for value here makes a lot of sense, right? But um, yeah, I, I wouldn't be looking to bluff uh, uh, too much here. I don't mind seeing an overbet here, actually. So because, I mean, if, if we say we're representing a hand like queens, I mean, a hand like queens is easily good enough to raise with. If we have a hand like five, six suited that we, you know, occasionally raise, that's that's obviously good enough to, raise, to bet big with. So, yeah, I wouldn't, I don't, even if we had a hand like ace queen, which check behind the flop, it would usually bet, of course, but when we sometimes check behind the flop, that hand's still good enough to bet big now. So, yeah, I like a big bet. And happily seeing a flop with 7 four, 4 suited, not putting in uh, a penny more. And ace 5 suited, not always 3 betting, but sometimes. That's a great board for us. You know, I mean, if we had 9 6 off suit, right, we would just always check in the big blind. So we're going to have that. If we had 6 for off, we would check in the big blind. And I don't think Miss, uh, Miss, Mr. O is going to. Is going to be limping uh, those hands. Maybe the suited varieties, but definitely not off suit. So, and we see Jack the, Jack nine eight here. This is a really good. I mean, it's not a good board for us. I mean, it's a decent board, right? But we can expect villain to have some sets here. Maybe a straight, some you know, maybe a two pair hand occasionally. I mean, should he have Jack nine? No, but it doesn't mean he won't, right? So yeah, this board is quite bad for us. So I wouldn't mind if you just check behind the base five. And, and again, you can still bluff later. Not as effectively in these games, most likely, but you can still bluff. If he has it in like pocket fours, he's going to fold the flop, right? But if you bet river, he's going to fold regardless. I don't think he's calling that much. Yeah, I like this play. Good, good check. Okay, he checks within one millisecond. So this is the type of play that you don't really see at high stakes, but you do see at lower stakes, is that people who have timing tells here, so did he trap you with the jacks? Yeah, potentially. But when he snap checks, there's definitely a chance he just has pocket fours, and if you if you if you put in a big bet here, he just folds. So I'll be looking to you know as I said, like highest stakes, I don't pay much attention to this. Only from uh, against recreational players, but at lower stakes, people have a lot of tells. So definitely something to look out for. And I know it's not cool to talk about timing tells, whatever. You know, it's like it's all about like the place Linus makes and RNGs and you know all the all the cool stuff. But a lot of this stuff works at lower stakes. It does, right? So I, a lot of times when people check very fast, they you know they just have a hand which doesn't really want to bluff. It doesn't really want to value bet. It's just like a decent hand, like pocket fours again. And so if you apply some pressure, they they often fold. So in your guys, if you're in this spot, just take your time a bit, right? Take a few seconds. If you got a draw. Don't you want to think about why not to bluff? What, what sizing you want to bluff? Let's say you got 10s, right? Do you ever want to value about that? Maybe, right? Just give yourself a bit of time. And then you often make a better decision. You have time. I mean, you have a time bank, so use it. Of course, don't tank and just slow down the, the game for no reason. But, you know, if it's a spot where your, your strategy is quite delicate, go ahead and uh, go ahead and take a few seconds. And you see, he checks his, checks within a millisecond again. Um, yeah, he checks within one millisecond again. So, I mean, if he's got a really weak hand, right, but one that's better than than nothing, like pocket fours, then I don't think he's going to call you. So, yeah, I wouldn't mind if you just put in a really, really small bet looking to get stationed by him like sevens. But even that hand would be ambitious. So I wouldn't mind if you put in a really small bet, but betting like 15 is not going to work. And he actually had a much stronger hand than we thought. So, you know, my read was just a bit off. The first two hands, it was uh, spot on. This one, it was a bit off. And then the thing is, that's okay, guys, right? A read doesn't mean that you know exactly what he's got 100% of the time. It just means that you, he's given away some information and, you know, there's a, higher, there's a higher chance that you're right. It doesn't mean that you're always right. So, okay, so he called Queen's preflop. That's mostly a three bet, but I understand. And on the turn, I guess for him it was not no decision. He was afraid of the nine, so he just checked. Whereas in reality, he can probably have found a bet somewhere. And on the river, obviously, he would end up checking because the flush gets there, and as well as ace king and you know ace five in your shoes. So yeah, I, I like the way you played your hand.
aces again. If you get aces and you're not excited uh, about getting them, then you should probably quit poker. I mean, I'm still very excited every time. I'm excited seeing you have aces, let alone me getting them in a game where I can make money. And of course, there are always three betting here. All right. The problem with aces is that you have two two guard, two aces in your hand, right? So it's less likely that a villain plays back at you. It's just more likely that he he made a weaker open raise. Uh, BTS Lab Plus. The four videos will be up to date. Yes, I mean the the ones that I created, I created them like a week and a half ago, and the the, the other coaches made them all. Yeah, these videos are all like uh, they were made in the last few weeks. So no, it's not like stuff from uh, from ten years ago that we just throw out there. Again, we focus on quality, right? So we don't just throw shit out there and just hope somebody buys it so we make some money. That's that's uh that's against our mo, right? Where we focus on quality and also just not fair. So the BTS Lab video is the new one. Um, yeah, we we have the new BTS lab with the videos on there, Sickly Joker, if that's what you mean. Which sites is better for micro stakes? Soft soft pull with mediocre rate back versus tough with great rate back. Well, micro stakes, all the games are uh, soft, right? Nuki, I assume. I mean, because of micro stakes, it's often tough to make a living, so you don't really see professionals. So at low stakes, the rake is. I mean, uh, so at micro stakes, the rake versus rake back is very important. So if you scroll down. You can see all the the sites we off, offer. You can sign up there. So, you know, because we have a lot of people on there, we get better deals than if you just Google them, right? So that helps everybody. <clears throat> In the corner, some made by flashback is a little bit annoying. Yeah, sorry about that. I can't. I cannot remove that. I thought it would be gone, but uh, I would just send this footage. So unfortunately, I cannot. Uh, I cannot remove it. So. Um, our guy is still a bit newer, so I, I, I'll tell him about OBS in which he can record this without the, that type of bug. So we'll, we're, we're eventually going to post this on YouTube, so we're going to put my dog over it or something like that. Just make it, uh, make it go away. How can I upgrade from BTS Lab to BTS Lab Plus? Um, well, you can. I've actually been told that you can. So... Um, in case you don't know, just go on uh, go on Facebook or uh, Instagram. Just go on social media and just quickly ask, and our support guys will help you with that. Uh, what you can also do is go uh, email uh, support at loftospot.com. So that should be that should be fixed within a few minutes. But yeah, it's definitely possible. In fact, we recommend them, of course, because I mean the BTS Plus Lab is obviously more advanced than the 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 re regular BTS Lab. <clears throat> How do you find and manage energy to keep focused during the day for long periods of time? You do coaching, stream, play, life stuff. How do you do it? Um, because I like what I do. And that's it. Because I like what I do. If I if I didn't like any of this, yeah, I would hate it, right? I've been streaming for a few years. I've been coaching for a few years. Playing, obviously, way longer. If I didn't like it, I couldn't do it. But I enjoy doing this, right? It's not it's not just about a job or making money. I have fun doing it. And, of course, sometimes I hate it, right? Sometimes... Sometimes things don't don't go well, but overall I like it. If I got paid way less or something, or let's say I wouldn't make uh, much money with it, I still would do it, right? Of course, it's not charity. I'm not I'm not working for nothing all the time, but I like what I do, and I think that that's key for all of you guys, right? If you really want to be good at something, you you have to like it. You can't. I don't think you can really be, get good at something. Like you need a reason to be good at something, right? You need a reason, and in this case, in our case, it's just having a fun job and making good money. Uh, but you need a reason if you really want to excel. Have you seen Game Changers? Uh, no, I haven't seen it. Uh, no. I mean, the issue is like when I'm at home, I always eat way more meat because my parents cook a lot of meat. Um, I also eat less well. So, yeah, when I go back to uh, wherever I go, I'll try and, uh, you know, eat better again. So I try and not eat like uh, my breakfast is always very healthy, but you know, especially like my dinners are pretty good, but then, uh, you know, I eat a lot of stuff on the side that I shouldn't be eating. So yeah, I know I've been trying to eat less meat, but it's, it's tough because I really love eating meat as in, I really love the taste. It, to me, it's not nothing primal or it's not about the feeling or any of that bullshit. I just like the taste of it. Right. So I don't want to hurt animals. Of course, like I try and eat as little as I can, but I don't know if I can go vegan to be honest.
But no, I'm not. I'm not a vegan. I don't advocate anything. I'm not a doctor. I I only advocate things I know about. Right. I advocate playing po like I advocate listening to my poker plays because I think they're pretty good. I don't advocate anything. Uh, you know, when it comes to uh, like veganism, whatever. Because I mean, I think I know a lot about it, but I'm not a doctor. I'm not a qualified physician. When will the webinar be? Um. When will the first one be? Uh, we still have to schedule it because, it, but it's going to be, uh, you know, obviously for the people subscribing, it's going to be this month. It's going to be this month. Um, yeah. So we'll announce the date, uh, Sig the Joker, but it's going to be this month, right? So if you if you were to subscribe, I would do it as soon as possible, uh, just to make sure you don't miss it. But I mean, otherwise you will have to potentially just wait a bit longer. But yeah, it's one one every single month, always presented by me. Now that doesn't mean we might do we might just uh, add them if if we feel like they're helpful and people love them. But uh, that that the the main one will always be done by me. The four videos in the lab plus uh, our live play or theory. Uh, it's going to be a combination of everything. So um, the ones the ones that I'll, I I uh, the, the ones that I'm releasing are not live play. I I'm generally not the biggest fan of live play to be honest. Um, because I like just taking my time and breaking things down. And when you, when you play live, you lose a lot of that dynamic. So uh, when I do a footage review, it's as I said, it's a review. Or it's like a concept video, right? Like check raising the flop, something like that. So um, there's going to be some live play videos posted because, you know, people like them still. But uh, I generally don't like them too much. So you won't be seeing them from me. So, but it's gonna. So the content is gonna be a bit of everything, right? Because if you only do hand reviews, that's not the complete. That's not the best way of learning. If you only do footage reviews, that's also not the best way of learning. We just want to do a bit of everything, right? Reviews, a bit of live stuff, hands, footage, concepts, pio, mental stuff, uh, anything else that you guys suggest. We're open to everything. So don't be afraid to leave your feedback once you've checked out the videos, uh, Sibinho. Uh, we are. We have. Uh, we. You can definitely do that. And thanks for checking out the staking uh, the press. So staking has nothing to do with the uh, bluff the spot lab. So staking has so basically if you get staked, that's for 100 play 100 NL players plus on party poker. Uh, basically, you can't lose any of your own money. You just uh, you basically you get coached by us. Uh, you get staked. So as I said, you can't lose any of your own money, and you get paid out in rake back and table winnings. Of course, if you have table winnings. So it's a really nice way of building up your bankroll without the stress of you know losing money and going broke or any of that. You can just like build your poker skills, build your experience, build your bankroll uh, with you know virtually no stress. So if you're interested in that, uh, yeah, you can uh, check it out on the website. Do you think it's better to play Zoom at a low win rate as I think games are tougher or regular tables? I don't feel too strongly about that. Uh, sea life, yeah, I don't feel too strongly about it. I think both have merits. I came up uh, with Zoom, but I I am not convinced that's the best way. Uh, you know, that's that's superior. So yeah, it's definitely easier to put in a lot of volume, but as you said, the win rate is lower, right? So it's kind of like figuring out what's your what your strength is. If let's say you're a bit older, you've been in the game for a long time, it's probably it's unlikely you're going to play 12 tables, right? So you should probably play regular tables. If you're a 21 year old kid that can play all day, you know, maybe focusing on volume makes a bit more sense. But especially in the beginning, when you're an intermediate level player, and people who play, you know, these stakes are intermediate level players now. Um, focusing on improvement is very important, right? That's why we like the party poker deal because you don't have to worry too much about the outside factors, and you can just, uh, you can just, um, you know, focus on improvement, which is very most important, right? Because it is, it's your education. It's an investment into the future. That's a lot of text, Kurt. I've studied with a lot of pile, but not in any kind of organized fashion. Just reviewing the difficult spots. I'm taking this month to run some sims and put them in a group, and categorize them. Okay. Do you think this is more efficient? Um, it depends. Also, the spot, the time, you know, it depends, Kurt. So it's really nice to have backup sims, so you don't have to sim everything at once or like uh, sim everything uh, on the spot. Um, so yeah, it, it's good to have some sims. So basically, I do both. I have a bunch of sims in different spots, and then you know, in, uh, if I don't have that particular sim or want to test something very specific, I run that sim separately. So a combination of both is best. Updated title, yeah, I'm sorry about that. We don't have access to Twitch right now, so we can't, uh, we can't, I, I can't send you guys a link. I can't uh, change the title. 
we're still waiting uh, for that, but it will, it will be fixed eventually. But yeah, unfortunately, I can't do anything about it. I know that some of you guys get an email notification. You guys like that. I'm sorry that you always get the same one, but it's always me doing some kind of different topic, right? Kumicon said he hated playing PLO. Well, the thing is, from what I understand, he's a guy who doesn't really have much of a life and, you know, eventually said he started hating it. Uh, but the thing is, when he got good, right, he loved it. But then eventually he got hated it. He didn't really, he likes PLO. He just didn't like the lifestyle, right? He didn't like the life he was stuck in. So that's different. What's your favorite show on Netflix? Mm, Better Call Saul, probably. I mean, they just finished season five, so it's going to be a while. Um, but I basically like crime-related series. There's also a show called Naked and Afraid I love, but it's not on uh, Netflix. The Sopranos I'm really into, but it's not in not on Netflix either. You don't have to love something to be good at something. Uh, sure, but the thing is, he may like baseball more, but he also liked football, right? So, I mean, there's probably, you know, like, I like laying on the beach just as much as I like playing poker, right? But there's not much of a career in that. So you can like different things, right? I'm just saying that if I, if I, let's say I'm a decent and I already hate it, it's unlikely you're going to get to the top. And of course, there's probably a few exceptions. How long will your webinar be? So it will be a monthly webinar and uh, we're still working out the characteristics, uh, the characteristics, the details, uh, probably like an hour and a half to two hours. So our group coachings are usually one and a half hours, uh, sorry, two hours, uh, the big one where everybody can join. And if we have them with small groups, they're usually an hour and a half. So it's going to be an hour and a half to two hours, once a month. Uh, will there be videos about NL200? Um, yes, there will be more, uh, more but uh, yes, there will be. So obviously, it's still, we're still building up our web. But I would say the average stake being reviewed will be lower than NL200. So obviously there will be some stakes that will be on the lower end, some on the higher end. But NL200 will definitely be included. Uh, there will even be NL500 in there. How, how big is the scale we have from NL500 to 10K? Well, that's a fun question. Um, decent. I mean, there, okay, put it like this. The worst high stakes regs do not beat NL100. The best ones obviously uh, crush NL100. Uh, you know, some of the best five and zoom wrecks could easily be the high stakes, but they just don't have the bankroll or they don't want the swings or they don't have a back or, or whatever. So, you know, just because people don't play huge doesn't mean they're not very good, right? And just because people play huge doesn't mean they're good. I mean, they're usually good, but not always. There's a couple of guys in there out there where, I mean, they are close to being fish. They, they are definitely worse than some fish. There's guys they cannot play because they're worse than some fish. And I'm not talking about Mr. Lee, right? I'm talking about legit fish, and they're sometimes worse. I'm not going to mention any names, but I got like four or five names in mind. But do you think 2017-2018 uh, OTB would win at 500 Zoom? Uh, OTB from two, three years ago is the best OTB. He would probably win like... He would he would win, for sure. OTB now is, is probably worse than OTB from back then. OTB from 2018 is better than any player today. Any player. Uh, I don't think the game has really evolved that much in the last two years, to be honest. I mean, it makes sense, right? Pi has been out for such a long time. Uh, you know, eventually edges get smaller and smaller, but it, it's difficult to uh, it's difficult to still improve more. I mean, the law of diminishing return. What hands can you bluff five at shove with? Ace five suited, ace queen, king queen. Well, that's a bit of a general question, uh, ugly. I mean, it really depends on the spot, but yeah, those are good types of hands to do it with. Man, that water was good. All right, let's do uh, let's do some more. Uh, queen A is pretty loose, so but I think you can probably open that to, uh, here. So your opponents get to defend a bit tighter because if they call, they pay a lot of rake. So you get to uh, adjust a little bit. Yeah, Queen A. I think I mean normally this hand is a bit too loose to raise, but I think we can probably raise it here. We can't go crazy because we we didn't know that player. Uh, Jack nine against a min raise. I mean, I don't hate folding here because of the high rake. In theory, that would be a call otherwise. A king jack suited. Um, that's this is something I saw in my uh, in the lab videos I created is that a lot of these players three bet way too small, which makes a bit more sense at micro stakes, but uh, still you can adjust to that a bit. And 
our villain snapjacks here. So when he again when he snapjacks, he's probably got something decent but not great. So you could sometimes bluff this hand because you have you block jacks, you block some check raise and he's king, you block hands like king queen, you have some types of backdoors, but you know you cannot go crazy here. If I wanted to bet, I would bet on the smaller side. So half pot is a little bit too uh, too large here. Quick call. So it looks to me like you know he's got something again. He's got something reasonable. Not an amazingly strong hand, but not uh, not not a super strong hand. Unless he's just trapping you with queens. <clears throat> and now with king jack here, I mean you want to be careful because you could definitely get shoved on, right? Maybe he has a hand like nines, uh, and now he's got the virtually the nuts. So, or he did slow play and he, you know, he will check shove. So you could get check shoved on on such a dry board. So yeah, you have to be a bit careful here. If I wanted to bet, I'd probably bet a little bit bigger than 16. I mean, you're basically saying you've got a good queen or better and not even always because you'd sometimes check behind on the flop or the turn. So you're quite polarized here. You'll be looking to get a lot of value. So if I bet, I bet on the larger side, but not gigantic, right? Not, not making check raising, check raises too, uh, too juicy yeah because then that happens right so i mean had you been like 30 right you would have lost nine more big ones so interesting how this person ch shoved he could just have any like nines maybe queens maybe slow play an over pair but this also looks quite draw heavy to me okay and king jack five is a pretty good board for us i mean really a good board because we're gonna have kings and jacks always we're gonna have king jack suited perhaps king jack offsuit Maybe occasionally pocket five, so we have good draws like queen ten and east queen. So don't mind the small sizing. Quick call. Meanwhile, jack three is just an easy fold. I mean, not 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 close at all. Had he min raised, I definitely would have called, but not against three point four x. Even though he doesn't have a full stack. And turn is a queen, which means that our hand is virtually never good because I mean, ace ten gets there, ten nine, ace queen. You know, so we could still be the hand like sevens. We could still be the hand like ace five suited or five four suited. I wouldn't hate turning this hand into a bluff sometimes, right? Blocking ten on suited. You could also do it over the hand like tens, for instance, or hand like ace nine. Uh, but th those types of plays, I think, uh, at NL twenty five don't work as well because they'll often just like snap call the uh, snap call the the river with like king eight. So yeah, that type of play, I'm not a huge fan of here. I mean, once you check behind, you've kind of lost, like against tough players, you've kind of lost the pot because if they have worse than, than pocket nines here, they're not going to let you win. But maybe they should, like maybe they show down sixes and stuff like that here. So, and now he pretty quickly bets. Yeah, we just fold. Six, seven would be a low frequency three bet. Calling here, I mean, the thing is, he raised quite large, right? Four and a half big blinds. So if you call here, you got a position, uh, you got a position to the, the potential recreational as well. So, yeah, this is kind of where the rake fucks you. you. You'll see, I mean, here, if this, if there were, if this were nl 10k, you could v pip your hand much more easily. But paying so much rake, I think three betting is a decent play. Calling not so much. Even though six seven two, suited is a is a great hand. So this is kind of like a funny spot. I mean, villain min three bets us. So what I've seen, I mean, there's a good chance that this is just end, which he doesn't want to flat and doesn't want to fold. So he's got like ace jack offsuit or sevens or eights. But of course he could just have aces and he could just have king three offsuit, right? So um, I'll probably end up calling here. King jack suited is normally a nice end to four bet, but against a recreational player, I expect him to not really fold the four bets. So this handing, again, in theory, if you look at, for instance, our preflop pre Bible, it will tell you to four bet this end quite aggressively, right? Against obviously a regular sizing, like seven and a half or eight. Uh, but against a guy who likely doesn't have that many folds, I don't think it works as well. But of course, you're getting a great price. You will be playing out of position, which sucks, but at least you're playing against somebody you've probably got an edge on. I 
Yeah, I mean, this is kind of the issue, right? I mean, you flop about as well as you can, but if he if he bombs it a few times, you're still in trouble. Quite a bit going on. Queen 10, obviously, an easy raise. And ace king here. You could sometimes slow play a hand like this. I mean, jack 3 deuce is quite uh, quite a dry board. And yeah, again, we see a flat caller, not a full stack. So checking range would be a mistake, I think. But checking ace king club specifically wouldn't be the, uh, the worst play. You know, when he when you hit your flush, your opponent can't have this at uh, the second best flush, right? So it's less likely he's going to put in a lot of money. So I, I don't mind if you just check here. And you saw tuck toward check behind again with uh, when you have king jack with your king jack here. And I would probably see it, like to see you lead out. Now you can't just lead out every single good hand every time, right? Because when you check, you're quite weak. Um, but I think you're not really getting raised very often. You have a pretty good hand here. It's a board he can be very aggressive on, so it's slightly surprising that he's not aggressive. And when he quickly calls the turn, that really scares me because he could definitely have ace queen ace king with a spade. So he's definitely checking, uh, definitely checking the river. Yeah, I mean, I don't think your hand needs to bluff here. If you had in like sixes, maybe you wanted to bluff or maybe a random hand, but not with this one. Yeah, so, okay, so our read, so <laughs> redemption, because my read here at least was spot on. So you saw preflop, you know, he's got a hand, he, he didn't want to make it too large, he didn't want to call a fold, so he just clicked it back. And the flop is like, yeah, decent hand, I'll just check behind, don't turn any calls and river. I mean, he should value that, but he didn't. So, yeah, you saw that his timing and his sizing, you know, they were a bit of a tell. Meanwhile, we have ace king here, what did we do? So, so villain bets full pot on the flop. You know, so this could be a sat. It could just be a random hand, but either way, we're not folding. I like just calling here. We're still beating all of his bluffs, of course. And on the 10, I mean, even if he bets really large, I'm still calling. If he bets like 40, maybe I fold, but if he bets like 15, I still call. So, I mean, against the sizing, yeah, yeah. I think check raising is not the best option against somebody who's most likely strong. I think check calling is the best play. We still have two overcards, uh, got shot on the flush draw. To be fair, overcards are not always alive, right? Because he could easily have king, jack, ace, jack, and then those cards wouldn't improve us. Well, they would improve us, but they would improve him even more. Queen unsuited, I think you can raise here. And queen 10. So here, I, again, I don't mind betting sometimes multi-way. Queen 10 is like okay to do it with, and I probably give up on this turn most of the time. This card is quite bad for us. I mean, it's good for, it's fine for our range, but it's also good for him. And as I said, those low equity, you know, questionable barrels don't work so well. And on the river, hmm. So we, we've seen people stationed before against, you know, checking ranges or whatever. We can represent ace jack ace queen with a diamond pretty credibly. Uh, the issue is that he can have all those hands as well, right? He can have like ace queen or king queen or king jack with a diamond. So if you bet here, I would like to see a large bet because you're representing a very large flush. And with ace king, I mean, easy fold on the river. You can still be you you can still win, right? I don't think you're gonna win, but it's possible. He probably just bets like whatever sizing pot it is well easy fold i mean you're virtually at the bottom of your range right you only have ace high you block a couple of bluffs uh, obviously there's no decision to be made here just an easy fold and we defend fours in the big blind which i would always do and then you know flop is going to be a pretty easy check raise here i don't think that villain is going to be opening five three suited uh, in the cutoff so unless he's got sixes you've got basically the nuts Uh, fives is usually a fold. I expect most villains here to squeeze quite tight, so your hand is not too appealing. Yeah, I don't, I mean, he did squeeze a bit too small. Something like 13 makes a bit more sense, but you're also out of position in Natsume. Um, you know, so your hand doesn't play very well. And you have, uh, often get in spots like this, and now villain bets, so you just gotta fold. 
very easy check raise uh, with pocket fours. Maybe not 100% of the time, you can mix it up a bit, but it's mostly check raising. And with fives, I would probably just check behind. You do sh do you do win against random air and like ace king ace queen. I think there's a good chance you get check raised here. You know he's got in like kings. Maybe he just check raises you because he wants to get it in. So definitely just checking behind and you know just praying we win against ace king. And meanwhile sevens. Uh, this opponent has a picture of himself, so we obviously have to bet. Yeah, I mean, so I get what you're doing with the fives, right? You're trying to value protection bet and then maybe turn your hand to a bluff. But again, these types of plays don't really work so well at lower stakes. So you have to keep it a bit more simple. So yeah, I'm not a huge fan of this bet. <laughs> but yeah, now, now you're in big trouble because, I mean, when, when he check calls here and any side type of hand, it makes a lot of sense. Uh, five, four suited. We can do both. I think both plays are winning. Uh, probably end up ending, up, ending up with a limp here. Yeah, I don't mind this. It's actually the hand we can limp call multi-way. So when the big blind, I mean, it sounds like a Lithuanian name or something like that. When he like, so he's most likely a regular. When he snap raises the five big blinds, I mean, he's obviously like, it's, it, I would be very surprised to see like a seven offsuit here, right? He's most likely just strong. Tens is sometimes a three, but sometimes a call. And with 5-4 suited, probably end up calling. But it's a shitty spot because you're out of position of both players. So you're going to basically play fit or fold here. Basically try and hit something big or not. And fives, I mean, if you wanted to make this play, at least do it with a diamond, right? Uh, I understand what you're doing, like bluffing some under pairs. But I don't think, again, uh, this is a play that in theory has some merits. But in practice, uh, not so much. And yeah, I mean, now, sure, flush got there, ace-king got there, ace-jack is a good hand, queen-ten got there. It, you don't have that many bluffs in your range, right? So that's one of the reasons why you'd bluff a hand like this. But again, you're you're trying to be, you're trying to win like a, like a pile competition rather than a money-making competition. So we, we flopped, you know, we just flopped quads out of, out of nowhere. And villain bets two thirds pot. Uh, I wouldn't hate if you just slow play here. I mean, when he bets like this, he might just be stronger, and we don't want to lose value. But on the other hand, we have the board absolutely crushed, and you know he has so much air, we don't mind seeing him put more money in with. Um, the queen is a really awful card for us, for our range, right? Because we don't have, really have ace king. So uh, I wouldn't mind if you just check here again. With the right read, reads, of course, we could bet. And our opponent is, our villain, our hero is circling, which means that he's asking for advice. You're also using the 66% paw button, which is my least favorite button in all of poker. Uh, yeah, like to see you not use that button so much. And Ace King, I mean, this looks like a really like wait, what I what even happened here? Ah, uh, open three bet call call. Um, with thirty big blinds already in the pot, I think we should we should just shove here. I'm now, you know, exploiting a potentially weaker player, shoving, you know, it doesn't make a whole lot of sense uh, the way we played our hand with 10s, but I don't mind if you ship here. Yeah, I don't like that bet size. Um, I think you're, again, you've got pretty good theoretical knowledge. Or you've, got, you've got flat out good theoretical knowledge of the game, but you're implementing it in spots where you shouldn't. So I think that if you move up, you're going to do quite well because you're going to do a good job against regs. Uh, but right now, you're not doing, you're not maximizing your profit, profits against recreational players by playing too much of a theoretical game. I mean, against that guy, right? You fold a 9-7 suited. Okay, fine. But he open raised 5x. He's clearly not a winning professional, right? So, you know, Pio and all that type of stuff kind of goes under the window. Of course, you can't just do random stuff. To, can't do random stuff, but... 
you don't have to think as you don't have to approach it as a, a solver versus solver game because you're playing against people who play for fun and there's nothing wrong with that you know and they open to five big blinds so yeah you're trying to out you're trying to use too complicated of a strategy where if you if you kind of dumb it down you know to put it bluntly i think that would uh, actually work better at times but i mean obviously you're crushing this game right uh jack deuce we can't defend yeah i like it king 10 obviously raise we'll cover this one and then uh, i'll take a very quick break well i guess i'll take one let's see what are you guys what are you guys up to I heard Trolley Poly is Phil Helmuth. There's not a chance in hell that guy is uh, Trolley Poly. Uh, are you going to hold back info from the webinars? Um, no. So, uh, so Mike, I will be I will be coaching the audience the best way I can, right? But the thing is, you know, for instance, here there's a lot of things I I have seen that I haven't mentioned, right? And that, why is that? Because I think it's not applicable. So I will tell you, like, you guys are paying for a product. I will tell you whatever you need to know. Now, if I think, let's say you play on 10, Mike, I'm not going to tell you something that only a few people high stakes might know, because even though that's cool and secretive, whatever, right, it doesn't apply to you, right? It doesn't help you. It might even make you worse because it will confuse you. So uh, I'll tell you whatever I think is best for you to improve. And I don't care how much information I get, it gives away. Obviously, on stream, I've got a clear limit because, I mean, this is for free, right? And it will always be for free. Uh, same with YouTube, right? It's for free, but obviously, there's a limit to it. So I don't hold back from my students at all. I tell them everything I think uh, they need to know. It's just that, you know, obviously, more advanced students, I tell them, you know, more advanced, give them more advanced concepts because they can work with them. So you don't three about 100%, 6, 7, 2, 6, 5, 2, small versus button. Small versus button. Um, I think that no, that was a different spot, like the Joker. It was a, like a lymph and an ISO raise. So those hands wouldn't be 100, 30 about 100 percent. You know the title is still MMA Shirak. Yes, I know. Well, I'm sorry about that. We can't change that at the moment. Well, I mean, if somebody has a picture of himself, you know, we gotta punish him. Why is the 66 percent power in your favorite? That one I'm not gonna answer, you, the Blade. But uh, the hero can definitely message me on Skype and I'll explain it to him. It's a very common mistake. Uh, but it, it it is one nonetheless. It's not easy to it's easy, it's a very easy you know spot to fix right. Some some leaks in poker take takes take months maybe years to fix right. But this uh, this is this leak takes three seconds to fix. In the spots where villain flop quads, I remember Duca seeing a similar spot saying to fast play because villains unlike that and he wants to bet the turn with her value. Um, if anything, I would prefer to check with the turn uh, the turn Kurt. So I mean, it really depends. I think it really depends. So if we had a naked ten there, yeah, it would often be fast play. So th the thing is, I don't think you should be, you should say something like, oh, they won't or they will, right? It depends on it from villain to villain. It depends on the bet size and the stack size and everything. So there's a lot of, uh, uh, you know, so, but the fact that we have quads and unblock all the bluffs means we actually cannot lose anymore. I mean, I, at least right now. So we don't mind seeing him put in more bets. But if you believe that, you know, he usually bets four and a six, and that's like he usually bets small. He just has it. Yeah, you just want to fast play, right? As a coach, I believe we should know. Uh, you, you Pifa, I, I appreciate the comment, but I'm not your coach, right? Like, I'm streaming on Twitch for fun. I'm streaming for fun, and it's you know the point is entertaining you guys, teaching you a couple of things about poker. But uh, I will never hold back anything from my students, right? And people who join up for join for the lab are technically also students. So, but this is a free poker stream, right? So I also don't feel oblig obligated to play, you know, 50, 100 red games with my old cards exposed on stream because that that's just super minus V for me. I don't want to do that, right? So this is basically, I give you a preview into what coaching will be like. Obviously, this is a bit more playful, uh, you know, and not interactive because usually like the student would be asking questions, I'll be answering him, right? This is just me reviewing something. Uh, but yeah, as I said, I'm not your coach, right? If you sign up, of course, I'm your coach and I'll never hide anything. But uh, I have to keep a couple things for myself because, I mean, there's many things that seem basic, but a lot of guys at high six do it wrong. Like very basic stuff. I, I, I can mention like 10 things right now, but I don't want to because, you know, some I know a lot of them actually watch these videos because I've had a lot of comments. And it actually kind of pains me because I'm like, shit, you, you've gotten better. And, you know, that's because of me. So, yeah.
because I know some high six players have bought the course or they say, oh, I watch your YouTube videos and I like him, stuff like that. And like, I appreciate the fact that they like him, especially because they're good. But I don't like the fact that good players are, you know, getting reads on my game regardless or that they, uh, you know, that they're getting better because, you know, they make more money. That means I make less money. What software is being used for bet sizes? Um, he's probably using Stars Helper, Sam Crow. By the way, nice, nice nickname. Shout out to Sons of Anarchy. <clears throat> How do you approach hyper aggressive players at, at low stakes? Uh, well, you're just gonna have to call. You're gonna have to call against them more often. You're gonna have to attack them more, and you're gonna have to attack them more when they're not aggressive. How much money did you make in May? A million dollar. I did not make a million dollar. No. Actually, I updated my uh, my two plus two uh, thread last uh, yesterday. Let me see. On the on the graph, it was like one on one. So in reality, I actually won quite a bit more. I probably won like double. But I guess you're just gonna have to believe me on that because I don't have proof, right? I mean, if you're playing some like shit Israeli sites but winning a lot of money. You know, yes, I made the money and it's mine and it's legit and everything, but if you don't have hand histories, you can't prove it. So that kind of sucks because I, when I used to post graphs, my, my graphs were always like 99 plus percent accurate. Now they're, you know, I mean, the graphs themselves are accurate, but they're not complete because, you know, there's just, uh, there's untracked sites I play on, but I'm not going to give up hundreds of thousands of EV just so my two plus two thread is complete, right? So yeah, that just, I mean, can't do anything about that, unfortunately. And by the way, if I see you guys bet 66, I'm not going to come over to your house and slap you or something, right? Like, it's not hor it's not horrendous. It's just like, it's part of, the 66 is just part of a larger problem that a lot of people have at low stakes and mid stakes. One of the most common problems, which is, which is a play, which is a problem that high six players have too, right? So no, don't, don't quote me on two plus two and say, uh, MMA Sharp thinks that 66% bet size is always wrong. That's not true. There's no bet size that is always wrong, right? And the bet, the difference between betting 67% and 64% is virtually non-existent. It's just part of a larger problem. But, you know, the students that are listening are probably, like, smirking, like, I know what he means. I know, I know. But I can't tell you that. One. Anyway, uh, we got, like, five more minutes, so let's review a few more hands. So 746 is quite a good board for villain because you know he's probably gonna defend some hands like eight five suited pre-flop, seven four sixes, seven four suited, seven six suited, you know, flush draws, eight nine. So you have to be careful here. So with the deuce, you know, the deuce doesn't really help you, the ace doesn't help you that much. I don't mind just checking here. Yep. Now this card, it almost seems sped up, right? All of these guys are just playing, like just checking within half a second. And no, I don't think they're bots, but they're just they're playing so fast. Uh, the ace is a really really good card for you because you're you know if you're checking back ace deuce you're likely checking back hands like ace king as well like king queen maybe sometimes like kings right. So we can be quite aggressive on a card like this. So I wouldn't hate if you uh, lost here sometimes. Threes against a pot size raise. I be, could be convinced it's a fold, but can't remember the last time I folded a pair in the big blind. And Tony Danuzzi, <laughs> that sounds like a soprano's name. Um, he flats in the small blind. So he's saying I've got a decent hand, right? I've got like sevens or a king 10 off or stuff like that. So we can just blindly bet here, but yeah, we cannot blindly bet here. So I'd probably like to see you check behind, but sometimes you can bet. I mean, betting here is mostly for value and protection, right? Against, you know, value betting against the war city's high, getting value from flush draws, getting, you know, protection against hands like 10 8 suited. So, yeah, it's a combination of bets and checks. And threes against a reasonable sizing, we just fold. And with ace deuce, I think value betting is too thin. If we, I mean, it's not like we get called by, I mean, we have a pair of deuces, right? There's no pair of ones in poker. So we get, can't get called by a pair of ones. So we ha we'd be getting called by ace high if we, had, if we were to win. And we have an ace in our hands, right? So it's just very unlikely. I mean, he would have to call us with like queen high, basically, which I don't think is going to happen. And getting check raises is a disaster. So I expect you to win sometimes against hands like ace queen, ace jack, and obviously give ups. So easy check behind. Uh, with jack nine here, we probably have to attack in some way by calling or raising. I mean, we're going to have quite a few good hands on this board. King seven off, king six off, seven six off, eight nine off, eight five off. So 
I, I wouldn't mind either a raise or a call. I think this hand does not get folded. And I, of course, you have two overcards to the seven, which is nice. So I can't blame you there for folding, but I think it's not a fault. And for uh, threes, yeah, we beat a million hands, but those million hands are going to run us over, and I don't think we're going to make it until the river. So just got to get rid of this hand. And queen nine, yeah, we can definitely open raise. And this is a really dry, good board for us, so we can be quite quite aggressive with small bets. And aces as well. Boom. Uh, you can definitely set up a standard raise size here because I saw you were clicking buttons, so you can save a bit of time by just setting that up uh, up as a default. You know, queen nine specifically is also good because you know you don't have that much shown on value, but you have an overcard and a vector straight draw. You also do a good job of blocking jack nine and queen nine. And your opponent bets, uh, check raises, you just gotta fold. So if we have a queen on suited here with a backdrop flush draw, you could contemplate a call, um, but not with queen on offsuit. So anyway, guys, so uh, thanks to uh, thanks to our hero for submitting the footage. Um, I would say he, he showed good preflop fundamentals, right? He showed a decent amount of aggression, but se selective aggression, which is good. Um, what I mostly say is the bet sizes could be uh, polished a little bit. And uh, the most important, uh, thing to work on is the fact that uh you know he was not really adjusting his strategy much so it was more like uh i've, I've just got a strategy but i'm playing the same strategy the, the same strategy against everybody so yeah have, having a bit more of a flexible strategy of course especially against recreational players right because against regulars you can only win so much but against recreational players you can win a whole lot more because i mean they make larger mistakes so uh, making good adjustments is uh, is quite important here. So overall, I would say our hero played in here. You know, if I had to give him a, a grade, I would say eight out of ten. So yeah, very good job. You I mean you're for sure winning in these games. So just keep working hard, put in a lot of volume, focus on quality of play, uh, and you'll get there, right? You'll get there. But it's a long process. Nobody got really good at anything overnight. And if if they did, that means that whatever they're trying to accomplish is not very difficult. So yeah, great job. And let's see a few questions. What are your computer specs? <laughs> actually, uh, actually, my hard drive crashed, so I had to get a, an SSD card. So I actually have no idea, to be honest. So, I mean, my my computer is quite old. My am I I'm streaming on my laptop now because I've got OBS installed. It's just a very it's just a random laptop, nothing special. Is Pi required for your lab? No, it's not. We will be. Uh, we will be teaching you stuff that's uh, in which we which, which we use Pi Solver, but that's cool because you can just see it on the screen and we basically use it for you. Uh, there's no chance in hell trolley poly is uh, feel how move. If you laid me 101, I would take the bet. Uh, does the lab plus lab include everything that the lower tier has as well? Yes, of course, Mike. So same as like the preflop Bible, light versus the regular Bible. It's just an extension, right? So you have more content, more privileges and opportunities, but of course you get the basic stuff as well, of course. So yeah, guys. Um, ah, another question. In these guys, is, in these games, is it more important to just bet your hands for value more than worrying about protecting your range? Um, kind of yes, Kurt. Kind of yes. So that doesn't mean you should like you shouldn't commit the same mistake, like the the same crime. Let's say and just never check good hands, never be deceptive because. You're basically like, if I say, hey, these guys are weak, run them over. But if you just do the same thing, people can just run you over as well, right? So, but since most opponents are not so aggressive in these games, yeah, I think you don't I mean, you have to be tricky sometimes for sure, but it's less important than against a guy, uh, you know, like OTB who might just throw in a, like a, a five times spot bet size, right? Or in a spot where he's very aggressive, you just you just think, hey, I never have a good hand to call here because I would have fast put all my good ones. At lower stakes, that that type of thinking or that type of strategy is not as important. Can we watch the webinar later if we missed it? Um, that's a great question, um, Sig the Joker. I don't know the answer, but I'm I could, I would be shocked if it's no. Yeah, we should right. So we we would be uh, we would probably just record it and then just uh, uh, upload it on the website uh, a while later. So yes. I mean, okay, don't take my word for it because I can't promise you, but I would be 95% sure the answer is yes. All right, so, 
So yeah, uh, is access to the BTS lab and community included? Um, yeah, so you have access to the community. So if you go to a uh, spot.com no mercy, no more mercy, you'll see like yeah, the community. So you have a community. We have you have a learning path, personal coaches, uh, etc. So yes, you have a learning community that you can uh, you, you can talk to. You can also talk to the coaches sometimes. So yeah, it, it's way more interactive than just like a dry form, right? Like for instance, you post Anon 2 plus 2 and hope for the best, right? And then there's probably like half trolls out, out there, like the 30% uh, incompetent people and then 20% actually have something good to say. No, that's not how it works. It's way more interactive and way more quality oriented. So anyway, uh, guys, thanks for watching. Thanks so much. Uh, if you're interested in the Bluff to Spot Lab, as I said, we just released it. So, you know, we're very excited about it. We, you know, we delayed it for a while. And of course, you didn't, guys didn't know that, but uh, we delayed it just because we want to make sure that everything is done right. Because, I mean, that's what we, that's, that's our MO, as I said. That's how we like to operate. Um, yeah. So if you want to check out the, the lab, I'm pretty sure there's also promotions. There's promotions running so you can get a nice discount now. So if you wanted to save money and get it, now is the time to sign up, right? Um, and also, I mean, if you want to improve your poker, if you want to improve your poker game and just make more money and have more fun while doing so, you should try and do it now, right? The same as like if you're trying to lose weight, you should just say, okay, I'm going to start right now. Not next month, not when I turn 79. No, you should just start now, right? And that that's that uh, that's uh, that relates to anything. Uh, applies to everything in life, right? You should just start now, and if you can save some money, that's fantastic, right? And we'll be posting this video on YouTube, so. Uh, most likely uh, next week, I guess. There's a nice video coming out tomorrow, by the way. So in, ca in case you guys aren't subscribed, just go to Bluff the Spot on YouTube and subscribe, please. That uh, that would really help us. So thanks for watching, guys. And I'm going to see you on Friday. I always stream Tuesdays and Fridays at 4 p.m., right? Always. So, yeah. Have a good day, and I'll see you guys soon.